Raids, fools. I have descended from the realm of the gods to tell you about Chess Evolved Online. I am the god of tomatoes, and welcome to version point fifty-six. Okay, I haven't done one of these videos in a while, nor have I played a whole lot of Chess Evolved Online recently, so bear with me a little as I present to you the Prince and King units. Before I begin though, I first want to say that I think it's really awesome the game is finally on Steam now, and coming personally from someone who's been playing since only a little after the game came out on Congregate, the community of this game, and especially the developer, are really awesome people, so I definitely recommend joining the Discord if you haven't already, and make sure to leave a good review on the game. I'll leave links in the description. Now I present the Prince and the King, plus my two brothers and brothers and brothers the word prince comes from the Latin word princeps, which means the first in line to rule. And forgive me if I mispronounce any of these words. And princeps comes from its two roots primus, meaning first, and capir, meaning to take. This was later shortened again by the French around the 1200s to the word we now know today as prince, which refers to the son of a king. Today, prince doesn't just mean the next in line to rule though, as it can even be used to refer to heroes who won't rule. The prince depicted in CO clearly follows the newer ideology, as if your king is dead, it can take over as a king, but if there is already a king, it remains a prince upon gaining a kill. As for requiring a kill to turn into king, this can be attributed to a rite of passage, most likely derived from fairy tales or folklore since they often depict princes having to prove themselves in battle, especially against heinous foes in order to become a king. Normally in history, a prince would become a king after both the king and queen die, or upon marrying the queen after the king's death. The only trustworthy sources regarding outliers to this that I found suggested if legislation brought the prince to the position early, but spending time in combat seems to be more of a point of honor rather than a requirement to be a king. Finally, as for the prince's move set, it is obviously indicative of the king's movement as they are meant to be very similar. The prince gains morale when it becomes king not only to make it a useful unit, but to represent how with a new leader it would inspire hope amongst the armies. The king is the most famous chess piece, as in classic chess, if it falls, you lose. And in CEO, though you don't lose immediately, losing a king can often lead to defeat. The king's origins in chess can be traced back to the beginning in the 1400s. However, it is not entirely clear which etymology of king spawned the king of chess in CEO. The three main etymologies king might stem from are kin, the old English word for family, which might denote the king as a leader of the people, kuningas, the Proto-Germanic word meaning one of noble birth likely related to the belief that kings were blessed by the gods themselves, and as such their bloodline was more pure. Or Kunigas, the Lithuanian word stemming from meaning someone who has superiority in a certain aspect. Kuningas, or the more modern form Konig, is very fair candidate as if the king is basically a demigod to these people, seeing it die on the battlefield could cause a huge drop in morale or remove the will to fight entirely. Kin, on the other hand, though it may have deep ties to the word king itself, it doesn't have a strong bond to the way the king acts in chess nor CEO. Kunigas similarly fails to properly represent the piece, as if it was truly superior, it might act more like the queen rather than requiring protection. With the idea that the word king draws from Koenig in mind, the CEO king seems to fit just as perfectly in the role as the king in regular chess, although it has a slight rule alteration. Upon first joining the game, the player is given the king unit. However, the player cannot get another king in the game unless they get to 100% in all collections. In which case, Grandestine, the developer, rewards them with a king plus that they may use in their armies. So whenever you are getting close to 100% completion for all your armies, make sure to ping Grandestine as much as you possibly can in the Discord server, that way he doesn't forget to give you your King Plus. The Prince, on the other hand, is a rare unit the player does not begin the game with, but may purchase either through any of the mystery crates or via the market itself. 
When purchasing princes directly from the market, you can purchase up to 20 of each tier at a time, although you can only ever have 4 princes in each army at a time, so keep in mind there is no point in getting more than 4 prince triple pluses. King doesn't have multiple tiers, so I'll quickly go over the point of a king before talking about prince tiers, as prince ties in heavily to the king. If any of you have played chess before, then you already know a king is the most vital piece on the board. And if you haven't played chess already, this game isn't really a good intro since it's like chess turned to the max settings. Anyways, the main difference between the king of normal chess and CEO is in morale. Rather than losing the king to lose the game, CEO is based on morale points, which are tracked in the top corner of the screen. And when they hit zero, it causes you to lose. The king to fit this style, rather than instantly killing you, decreases your morale by 25 and can continues to decrease it by 3 every turn without a king. You likely won't lose immediately after losing your king, but not having a king is going to increase the amount of blunders you make as the opponents can easily make you feel rushed by either destroying your higher value troops or by forcing stalemate moves that keep you from advancing towards them. Thus, units like the Prince come in, as they can replace the king to allow more thinking time and avoid getting defeated by a rush army as often. If you don't have a prince and you lose your king, other units like Envy can replace king, but in the worst case scenario, remember to calmly analyze your opponent's moves to find an opening wherever you can, either increase your morale count or decrease your opponent's faster than yours. The prince, like most units, comes in four different tiers. The first tier, or base tier, has the same movement pattern as the king. It costs 9 value and has the special ability of if you don't have a king, then it promotes to one upon a kill and gives you 20 more out. The second tier costs 1 more value to have an extra movement square in all adjacent directions. The prince double plus costs 2 more and those extra movement squares become move or attack squares. The final tier comes to a total cost of 14 value, and the directly adjacent squares become an unblockable move, attack, or swap with allies. Both the king and prince are champions, meaning they cannot start on the front row under normal conditions. The prince tiers can be relatively split into two categories, defenders and hunters. The first two tiers fall under the defender category, as they don't have a high offensive power, but their ability allows them to easily guard the king, so that upon an assassination they can quickly take over. The difference with the second tier being that it doesn't have to constantly remain right next to the king due to its higher movement speed. This is especially useful when combining certain units like the Valkyrie which can teleport the king. The third tier is a hunter as its higher cost and offensive power wouldn't be justified by simply waiting next to the king the whole game. It can actively be out in the fight and should the king die, it can hunt down an enemy unit to quickly receive a new king. The last tier gaining swap and unblockable squares allows it to fit into either category based on playstyle, as it can defend the king from units with armor or go out into the front lines with other units and utilize its swap to fork enemies. Prince's main strength lies in its ability to promote to a king. This allows the prince to both act as a replacement for the king, but also as a deterrent for assassination attempts. Due to prince's nature, the units it counters aren't necessarily pieces it will win against, but rather pieces that won't be able to activate their full strength against an army with a prince. Although of course, keep in mind that prince can limit many more strategies and plans, such as the classic angel or ninja strategy that involves using a long-ranged unblockable to attack the king. Those two units, however, have a much wider variety of uses, so the prince wouldn't be counted as a direct counter for them. The prince can counter Minotaur, as the Minotaur's ability to teleport the king will actually give the side with the prince an advantage, allowing them to take pieces with the king without having to worry about the king dying, since they can easily use the prince in order to get a new king. And Prince Triple Plus can counter any armored units that land adjacent to it. This is useful for such cases as a Flanx Triple Plus or a Fencer Triple Plus, which have high movement speed that might try to target the king. The king has no strengths. 
It is a unit that for a majority of the game, if not the entire game, will be a burden as you have to focus on protecting it or risk losing a lot of morale. The Prince's largest weakness is also its greatest strength. It's an insurance of sorts, so although it decreases the chance you'll lose a king, it keeps you from spending as much value on other units which might improve your offensive power. With this trade-off in mind, I will now list units that are direct counters to the Prince. Keep in mind though that these will be generic to all Princes, as technically a Prince double plus will always beat a Prince base tier, but that's not worth noting. Additionally, if the piece costs more than the Prince, it isn't really a counter, unless it's like 1 or 2 value more. After all, a queen can beat a prince, sure, but if you trade a queen for a prince, you're probably losing in the end. Also, I'll of course include units that can kill a king in such a way that the prince's defenses would be bypassed, even though this wouldn't affect a hunter prince. The prince's counters all share one of three things in common. They either have a forking attack, like a knight or a valkyrie, they have a long range attack to be able to hit the king from further away, or to be able to disappear upon hitting the king, or they have a way to move the king away from the prince, that way it's easy to kill the king without worry. So those pieces are going to be a knight, a ranger, bomber, fireball, poison mage, valkyrie, alchemist, summoner, thunder mage, fire elemental, Aquarius, Angel, Wrath, Nexus, Fire Mage, Arachnid, and Void Mage. And for those units, there are a few that require specific tiers. For example, Arachnid wouldn't really work unless you had an Arachnid triple plus, that way it could get the two range poison damage. However, for the most part, any tier will work for those counters. The king's biggest weakness is existing. By the way, let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about any of the counters that I've listed, and I can explain in more depth why each one is a counter to the prince, but I figure most of them are pretty self-explanatory, and it would just be a waste of time to try to explain them all right now. For the Defender Princes, your main strategy will be keeping them next to the king at all times. So as soon as the king dies, they can replace the old king. With this in mind, Defender Princes allow you to move your king more freely, as you won't face as serious consequences if your king does die. However, you will still lose morale and one of your champions, so you still have to exercise some caution. This allows you to do more advanced things like using your king as bait, or simply not wasting as many units on defending your king though. Good pieces to combo with a defender prince are the Shieldsman, Royal Guard, Valkyrie, and Nexus. Hunter princes on the other hand should be traveling across the board away from the king. That way they can attack other units or offer control of important areas, and should the king die, they just need to kill an isolated piece to become the new king. Hunter Princes, similarly to Defender Princes, combo well with Royal Guard, Valkyrie, Summoner, Beacon, and Nexus. The King requires the most intense and particular strategy of all. It's one that requires great skill and seems very arduous, especially with how many people fail to follow it. The strategy is something I like to call not dying. Good units to combo with this ideology are any units in the game that you're able to use to protect the king. Prince, Royal Guard, and Valkyrie are especially helpful with this though, for all the same reasons that I've already shown. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching, and please leave a like and subscribe for more of my content. If this video gets 10 likes, I'll do another beginner's guide video. Also, at the end of these videos, I'll start leaving rewards. So if you want 10RP, leave a comment with one of the codes I have up on the screen, and your username with the four numbers if you play on Steam. Each code only has one use, and only one per person, so it's first come first serve. If you don't know what RP is, it gives you contribution and rubies which allows you to get more units for your armies.